so um <laughs> yeah I got a whole lot of things from Japan and well all of them came yesterday I got all of these over the course of this year and it spent quite a lot of time at customs because well it's a pretty big package but well good thing today it came well rather yesterday it came and in this video I'm going to be opening all of these um, and yeah if some of them prove to be good and working and whatnot I'm going to be making a separate video about them as well so yeah this is going to be completely unscripted just you know me opening them just one big take and um, yeah so let's get right into it so let me just um ah, let me take off these two decks over here Ooh, yeah very heavy and then let's arrange all of these smaller packages right here on the table okay yeah that's all of the smaller packages I'm going to be moving my camera so it's more zoomed in so that you know you can see when I uh, when I open up each of these more clearly you know so now I'm just gonna really quickly um, arrange the items so that only one of them is caught on the camera and I'm going to be opening them up one by one and yeah so this whole package consists of a bunch of cassettes a bunch of mini discs and their respective players and decks and a timer an audio timer so I think we should get to the cassettes first um, I'm gonna really quickly grab a pair of scissors Okay, I got my scissors. So, yeah. Let's open these up. Let's begin with the cassettes. So, this one over here, I can already see what's inside. Um, I already know what it is. Yeah, you can see there it's a 1979 TDKD. But, you know, let's still open this up. Um, I use Joss, a company called Joss. It's an intermediary thing. It's a middleman. Um, yeah, that's what I use to participate in Japanese auctions, on like Yahoo auctions and whatnot. And I um, actually got introduced to Joss by another YouTuber called Techmoan. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you watch my channel, you probably also watch Techmoan. And yeah, he made a video on Joss before. I'm going to link that in the description if you're interested. But, you know, this is not affiliated, not sponsored. Okay, so, yeah, we've got some Sony UXs. Let's see, is there a safe way to open this? Yes, there is. Okay. Yeah, a bunch of these, really. Um. The, the auctions, they, they sell them for basically dirt cheap, but because of tax and import duties, oops, yeah, because of tax and import duties, their prices become a lot more normal. <laughs> but anyway, here, there's one of the UXs, that's from, I'm pretty sure 1989 or 1990, um, whatever it is, but yeah, whatever it is, that's where the UX is from. It's got a pretty decent weight. Um, I might actually test the audio of these in a future video, but, um, we'll see. Yeah, these UXs are absolutely beautiful. Very stunning. So, for the 1979 TDKD, I saw a piece of tape at the back, and I accidentally ripped the plastic, but that's fine. So, um, let's get these out now. Oops, it's out of focus. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there's another layer of plastic. Joss really, um, 
really does well in the packaging department. They, they package their things really, really well. Very durable with like... I, I, I don't know what kind of tape they use, but some something... I don't know, medical grade maybe? Um, yeah, and the, the bubble wrap, lots of layers of that. And there's a certain bubble wrap that I don't actually know of. Like, I've never seen that before. Until I've until I use Jaws, the one with the really really big air bubbles. Yeah, I'm more used to these uh, these small ones. But as you saw in the decks, in the two decks, there were a bunch of really big air bubbles in those ones. So I'm not sure how those were made. But anyway, here you are. 1979 TDKD. Oh, so beautiful. Um, if you've seen my Kenwood video, I'll, I'll, I'll grab the, uh, yeah, here's the Kenwood N60, and the difference is indeed, or rather the similarity is indeed very, very clear. Yeah, the, the Kenwood is made by TDK. Um, yeah, it was made three years after the 79D, so it just used, um, a bunch of leftover cases and whatnot. But let's get that Kenwood out of here. We're focusing on the TDKs. <laughs> yeah, these are the cassettes. I'll just grab my Bic so I can, you know, rewind them properly. Yeah, a bunch of these, and all of them haven't been, haven't actually been written on, which is great. I love that. And yeah, they, they seem to be in really good condition. Yeah. Um, it seems that their labels still haven't yellowed, and the, the plastic is still really smooth, and the plastic hasn't yellowed as well, so that's really good. Um, it seems that the labels have been written on at the back, but I, I, I don't really care about those since, you know, at least the cassette label hasn't been written on, but yeah, they seem really nice. Um... <laughs> So yeah, those are the D's and the UX's. Let me just put them over here on the side. These UX's, they, yeah, their stickers, some of them are still intact actually. So that's really nice and some of the labels still haven't been written on. So that's, that's perfect. Um, and it seems the, the slip sheets are still really good. I can rewind them very, very easily. Um, so yeah, it's great. Let's put them over to the side here. Let's get this uh, bubble wrap out. Okay, <laughs> next one. Yeah, this one I could also already see um, because it's very shiny. The label is very shiny, and you should be able to know what this is just by looking at it. You know, if you've been interested in cassettes for a while, yeah, you should already know about this blank and a few other blanks as well. And, oh, apparently there are some mini-discs inside this package. I'm going to be putting those away for now. I'm, I'm going to focus on the cassettes. So, yeah, these mini-discs, you're going to go to the side. Okay, these four cassettes, I was really um, keeping my eye on these because it had a certain very rare cassette. And you'll be able to see that in a bit. But first, that's just a regular... 1978 Sony CHF that's nothing special but I did not buy it for that this is one of the things I bought it for the 1985 Maxell XL2S this is quite rare because usually people bought the XL2s but not the XL2S came with the original J card and the stickers which is great love that yeah love those stickers and that's the cassette very shiny very you know, catches the eye. This one, another one. This is the 1985 TDK AR. Um, I only have a 1988 ARX and a 1990 ARX, and those sound wonderful. They sound so good. So, I'm hoping that this AR sounds just as good as them. Yeah. And uh, the stickers, they're also there. That's great. And the label or rather the J card is still in really really good shape oops <laughs> it doesn't seem that there's been any damage to it 
So yeah, that's that's really good. Yeah, you can see there TDK AR90 normal position acoustic response tape. Wonderful. Yeah, great cassette. Love that. Love how it looks and a lot of people love how it sounds, but this this is the one I've been keeping my eye on. This the TDK ADX. This seems to be from 19 82, 83, seems like 83 to me to be honest, and this is the original version of the TDK AR, and this is even rarer than the other ADXs because it's the 46 minute version, which means it has beautiful, beautiful, big hubs, yeah that's great, and they would look great on my deck, yeah, I might make a video on these actually. And the stickers, they're still there and they have a, that little um, gold thing, which looks, once again, absolutely stunning. And the J-card is still here. So nice. Yeah, TDK ADX46. Yeah, so good. Okay, those are those cassettes done. Um, these are some more cassettes. I'm not sure what they are at the moment. I could not really see through the the bubble wrap that well but you know let's just take a look at those yeah this bubble wrap is um, quite thick I wonder what's inside um, I can see there that one of them has what seems to be um, the upside down case rather J card you know and oh I know these yep I know these yeah there was a certain listing on Yahoo Auctions for um, a whole lot of metal cassettes, Type 4. And um, since at the moment I only have one Type 4, which is a 1983 TDK MA, yeah, I just decided to, you know, um, make use of the opportunity to grab all of these metals. Yeah, look at that. Axia PS metal from the 90s. Not sure exactly what year. It uses the inverted case. Beautiful little thing. Beautiful shell. Um, I'm pretty sure um, Tony from Cassette Comeback uses these tapes when he sells um, metal pre-recorded tapes. The labels aren't there anymore, but there are other stickers there which are still present. And it seems it's been written on, but I don't really mind. I just want the cassette. Fuji SR. This is, um, I, yeah, I'm going to actually make a video on Axia because, yeah, Fuji, um, actually made cassettes before, but then they changed their name to Axia in the 80s. Um, this shell reminds me a lot of TDK cassettes, but I don't think they are because this is a different texture and this has Fuji cassette, um, embossed on it printed on it whatever but yeah it seems one part of the right protect notch yeah one right protect notch has been punched out but I don't really mind um, looks great I, I love that that Fuji cassette on it and um, yeah this Fuji SR it still has its original stickers but they've kind of yellowed that's unfortunate um, the J card it still looks pretty good and it hasn't been written on at the back that's beautiful that's wonderful Love that. Yeah, that's the Fuji SR from sometime in the early 80s. And this, this is an absolute stunner. The 1985. Yeah, um, I forgot to mention, I, I have this problem sometimes with my camera. Every 12 minutes or so, it stops recording for some reason. But anyway, as I've said, this... The beautiful, absolutely wonderful, 1985 Sony Metal ES. Yeah, this is actually Cassette Comeback's favorite cassette. And you know what? I quite like it too. I heard it, I heard the, um, the video, it sounds great. And yeah, the stickers, most of them are still there. And the J-card has not been tampered with except for this part, which I don't really mind. Yeah. I love this cassette, um, it looks really great, yeah, 1985 Sony was absolutely 
yeah, so good. Um, this is a 90s TDK MA. I think it's like 1994 or something, but it's a 46 minute one. Um, the stickers, most of them are still there. And the J card has been written on, but I don't really mind. Yeah, TDK MA. One of the later ones. And these are some of the later Sony Metals, the Metal XR. Yeah, let's see. Are the stickers still there? They are. Yeah, they are. Great stuff. Most of them are still intact. So that's the... Yeah, those are the Metal XRs. Um, bunch of them here. Three of them. And they look to be in pretty good condition. They've just been written on, but I don't really mind, as I've said. Yeah, really nice. And they're all 46 minutes. So it would be great to record some of my, uh, my favorite albums on there. Anyway, let's put those to the side. And let's see, what's this? Um, I'm not 100% sure on what that is. I know what, what this other one is, so let's use this first. Um, there are some mini discs once again, but I will I will put those away for now and I'll do those later. But yeah, let's just grab the cassettes from here since there are a bunch of them. Yeah. Okay. Whew. Very tough bubble wrap. Luckily, all of it survived shipping. <clears throat> yeah. These ones are really, really nice. Yeah. Quite rare, I think. Well, yeah. These ones over here. I'm sure you know what these are. Um, yeah, I am just extremely just just floored to, to see these in person these beautiful beautiful things ah the 1988 sony metal and sony ux master just wow like oh my goodness that is so good what in the world yeah i'm i'm just i'm just very, very, very happy. Yeah, look at that. That shell, that shell is heavy. And you know why? It's made with ceramic. It has a ceramic shell, so it's literally made with tiles. The, the material they use to make, to make toilets with, they used on, on this cassette. And yeah, ceramic composite. So that means it should have very little um, hiss or rather less hiss and less noise when placed in the machine. Yeah, it's beautiful and I do not want to drop this because if I drop this, it is going to break. So, yeah, very, very heavy cassette. It's the heaviest thing I've ever, heaviest cassette I've ever held in my hand. The UX Master is definitely in much better condition. And both of them come with um, these things that you, uh, it's, the type of ink that you write on the cassette and then it's going to imprint those permanently yeah really nice um, this J card has not been tampered with on the UX master unfortunately it has been written on on the metal master but I don't really mind the UX master is just yeah look at that that blue is great and you can actually remove the right protect notches let me try to do that right now. Let's see. Man, it's pretty hard without without nails. <laughs> oh man. What in the world? Yeah, they're they're very fiddly. Um let's see. Could I could I possibly There you go. I could push it out with my with my pen there and, and if I don't want to record on it I could just flip it over and place it back back in there yeah like something like that but I'm gonna keep them out so that you know I can record on it yeah and um, these screws aren't actually your normal 
um, JIC or, or was it JIC or whatever, Japanese something something, or your regular Phillips screws, they're actually hex screws to prevent other people from, you know, opening the cassette. Yeah, really, really weighty. Um, yeah, those, I'm very happy to have, to have those. These are the, uh, they're among the holy grail cassettes, basically. This one is also a rare one. Um, I saw it for really, really cheap. So I decided, hey, might as well, right, I might as well get it. This is a 1977 TDK ED. Now, what is the ED? Well, it's actually a ferric cassette, but it's very black. You know why? Because it actually uses black magnetite. Now, if you have been into cassettes for a while, you should know that black magnetite is something that Maxell used in their 90s cassettes, which made them sound better. And yeah, TDK made use of them in 1975 and 1977, and they stopped in 1979, and I do not know why. Um, I heard that they sound really good, really high fidelity, but I'll have to test that out for myself. And yeah, 1977 TDK ED, black magnetite. Really rare, and um... Not very sought after, but still really rare, and yeah, I really like that. TDK ED. Now the last batch of cassettes from this bag. Um, I'm sure more of you would recognize them. Because they are a lot more common than the other, the, the other three that I showed. Yeah. These are... 19... 85 Maxell UD1s and once again they are 46 minute cassettes so I can record some of my favorite LPs on there by Elvis, The Beatles, whoever, right? Yeah, really tough tape. There you go. Just flew out of there. Okay. Man, you know what? I'm just gonna rip this apart. <laughs> Do I wanna rip it? Okay. Yeah. Maxell UD2. 46. Really, really beautiful. I, I, I love that shiny, shiny gold. And the stickers already seem to be on them, but they haven't been written on. Um, once again, the labels have been used, but I don't. I don't really mind. Um, and yeah, just all around beautiful cassettes. Beautiful, absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, I love how they look. I love how they shine, and everything. And they seem to be in really, really good condition. So that's great. Now. Um, I'm gonna bring the the bag back from a while ago, cause I mi I almost missed um these cassettes. Yeah. Um, these are some more metals. Yeah. Um. There you go. This seems to be 1988, 1988 Sony Metal ES 54. Yeah, 54 minutes. It's really it's a really unique um number of minutes. And it could be used for longer albums, which were placed on, you know, more compressed vinyl, such as um, Paul McCartney's Flaming Pie. That's 54 minutes, I'm pretty sure. And, um, yeah, this is the J card. It has not been used at all. The stickers are missing, but I don't really mind. They look beautiful as is. Yeah. This one as well. Once again, it's there. And the stickers are here. That's really great. And the J card again has not been used. And the last one, it is actually missing a J card and stickers, but that's fine, you know? It's fine. That's probably gonna be like my uh, my beater um, metal tape, so I'll just use those for miscellaneous recordings and whatnot. 
Um, yeah, those are the those are all of the metals that I got. I'm pretty sure. Um, and now there's this one other box. I'm not a hundred percent sure what's in it. I don't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's very thick. Um, in terms of bubble wrap, so there must be something interesting inside here. Yeah, let's see. Once again, I don't remember. Oh! Oh, I know this! Oh my goodness, okay. This one is great. This is really great. If I can take off the bubble wrap. Yeah, let's, let's put the mini discs to the side. These ones as well go to the side. And this, look at this! Take a look at these beautiful things. You know what these are? Type 3. Type 3 cassettes. The Denon DX5. This seems to be from 1984, 85. And these ones are from the previous generation. Yeah, double coated tape. Fecker. Yeah, fairy, fairy chrome. Beautiful, just so good. Yeah, these are. There, there was a very limited run of these. Oh, the, the person. Printed on them. That's really nice. Um, yeah, these were, these things are just, yeah, really rare. And you know why? Because nobody bought them, or rather, barely anyone bought them, because. They were priced at a premium compared to Type 2, but they had very little difference. In my opinion, these sound like an SAX, a TDK SAX. Um, how do I know this? Because, yeah, I know this because I already have a Type 3. This is a 1979 Sony Duad, and I'll be making a video on this soon. But, yeah, I think, in yeah, in my opinion, they sound like a TDK SAX and that's it because yeah as I've said they've they were priced at a very high premium due to the double coating but they didn't offer a lot of um, a lot of improvement over the existing type 2's so yeah those are the that's the story of the type 3 I have another Denon cassette from this era it's a DX1. So, yeah, maybe next time I could try to get the DX2, 3, and 4. I don't know. But that's the DX5. And, yeah, very, very shiny um, sticker on there. The the J cards seem pretty, pretty good. Yeah, apparently there's Toto and Steely Dan on this one. Um, yeah. Very happy to have these. These are my th only three... Um, Denon, yeah, Denon Type 3s. I don't, this is my second, third, and fourth. These are my second, third, and fourth Type 3s. Once again, this is my very first. I got it for like $2. Really cheap. And these were really cheap too, the Denons. Um, I'm not sure exactly how cheap, but they were very, very cheap indeed. And this one right here, this is our very last lot of cassettes. And this is basically a variety of cassettes from the 1985 Sony catalog. This, this is just to um, complete my collection, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Hold on for just a moment. Very thick bubble wrap once again. Let me put that in focus. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Ah, there you go. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, you know what these are? These are 1985 Sony Ferrex. Again, very, very cheap. Yeah. But, you know, they, the prices became pretty normal after um, shipping. Anyway. Yeah, bunch of HFs. You should know these by now. Yeah. Let's skip over those. 
HFS, you should know these as well. They're the mid-range ferric. 54 minutes. Very nice. Yeah, some more 90s. And these ones. These are the ones that... These are the main reasons why I, I got this lot. Here you go. Sony HF-ES. They're very rare. They still have the J... The J card, yeah, the J card's still fine, and the stickers are still there, and this is beautiful. HFES, very dark tape and very good sounding tape because I, because I actually have one of these already. Yeah, HFES, and then there's also the HFX. This HFX is um, the Japanese version of the ES. I'm not sure why they made that. They did, so there you go. Okay, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all for the cassettes. We'll get to the decks later, but yeah, here's everything. It's uh, quite, quite the number, <laughs> quite the number indeed. Let me put away these um, bits of bubble wrap and fix the focus. Okay. Ah. Yeah, wow. Um This is an absolute ton. <laughs> yeah, so many of them. Um oops, not this one. Yeah, that's all of the cassettes. So now let's move on to the mini discs. I'm pretty sure I got more mini discs than cassettes. Um but yeah, let's take a look at them. Let's just put these cassettes away for now. Yeah, I'm very happy I have these. Very, very happy. But anyway, let's get to the mini discs that you've already seen. I have a hard time pronouncing them. Mini discs. You know, the SCS really gets me. This one is, yeah, very colorful. Um, it, it caught my eye and, and it was pretty pretty low priced. Um, yeah, it came with a cardboard box for some reason. So yeah, let's just uh, take out this cling wrap apparently. Ah, wow. There you go. Okay. These are the very first mini discs that I have ever held. Yeah. This is a Victor Crystal Gold Pure Dual Strong and Stable Shell MD74. Very light and very small. I quite like that. And it just snaps into place. It reminds me of the case of the, um, the DC International cassette. Because that is how it worked as well. There's a, there's a, a little latch there on the side that catches the cassette so that you know it prevents movement same concept for mini disc and yeah this was basically pretty much a, a floppy drive a floppy disc but you know more storage and it's magneto optical on this side it's magnetic and on the bottom side it's optical yeah that's how you record using the magnetic side and you read with the optical side the on the optical side the laser actually burns the disc it makes it very very hot to a, a curie point basically and then the magnetic head writes on here that's why when you lift up the the latch um, both the top and the bottom are open because when recording you have to use both sides very colorful once again blue purple green, gold, and uh, gold and black. Very, very nice things. Um, yeah, that's many disc. There was a lot of, um, a lot of combinations. A lot of combinations were made with many disc in terms of design. Because with many disc, you don't really have to worry so much about quality. Um, to be honest, it's really just the 
the magnetic side that you have to worry about and um yeah these ones are sealed um yeah these mini discs are sealed and i'm having a hard time opening up the plastic safely so i'll just you know do it like that <laughs> yeah they're sealed they're sony sony Nige? Nige? Nige. I don't know. Um, Nige? Like beige? I, I have no idea. But they are sealed. And so, yeah, that's really nice. Um, so that if ever my, uh, my blank, my used blank mini discs are, aren't that good, I could um, open these up brand new. Let's clear up the table once again, and um, let's proceed to our next batch. Okay, these ones. These ones I have been really, really interested in. Okay, let's put these for later, okay? Those are the ones that I've been interested in. This one, yeah, this was a um, another high-end mini-disc, I'm pretty sure. This is... Yeah, let's just take off the plastic really quickly. There you go. This is the Sony Prism. Yeah. Very nice, solid, rigid shell. Um, looks very, very classy. And it says it's shock absorbing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, very classy look. Um, very elegant. With the black and the gold. Very much like the, um, the, the Victor. So there you go. And this one, this is the one I've been very, very interested in. You should take a look at it. One second. Let me just open up this plastic and fix the focus. Okay. These ones are really nice because they are essentially the Metal Masters of Mini Disc. They're very heavy compared to the other ones, though they are not ceramic. This is the Sony ES High Quality Digital Audio Mini Disc. Yeah, beautiful. It looks so great. Very classy, just like the Metal Master. Unfortunately, some of them have slightly yellowed, but well, you know, the, the pure white ones are still. They still look really, really nice. Yeah, that is the Sony ES. This was their top of the line, and based on the look of the shell, it shows. Yeah, it shows. That was their very, very best mini disc back then. And now, this one I wanna show you. Oh, yeah, very heavy. Because it's a whole bunch of TDK mini discs. Yeah. Um, a whole job lot of these um, for very cheap once again very cheap yeah <laughs> let me just open it really quickly yeah a bunch of TDKs so you will be seeing um, no Sony's here or no Victor's <laughs> yeah there you go a bunch of these yeah just a big big brick <laughs> Very, very heavy. Of course, because they're all combined in one thing. Yeah, I've got one stack opened up. So, that's good. Ah. Okay. Stack number two. Now, why do I need this many cassettes and mini discs? Well, I don't know really. <laughs> I just want to record a lot of things for a lot of people and for myself as well. And you know, it's really nice collecting these things. Makes me happy, you know. 
just seeing all of the different designs and um, talking about their differences in quality it has a better in my opinion it has a much better feel compared to digital because digital you just you know scroll through a bunch of pixels and um, and pick whatever song you want here it's physical you know you have a sort of bond with the machine with the format with whatever you know you, you have a connection with the thing because you are dealing with it you're touching it with your bare hands you know or sometimes with gloves for those types of people so yeah it's really really nice so let's review all of these this is a TDK XA this was their top of the line once again in the 90s I'm pretty sure the XA is meant to imitate the name of the SA which is of course you know the cassette MD-74 no particular name to it another MD-74 this, this is the MJ-74 um, apparently this should mean music jack yeah um, with the there's also, there's also a TDK DJ the disc jack I don't know why they don't call it a music jockey or a disc jockey but I don't know okay that's just how they named the MJ and the and the DJ um, it looks and feels very entry level I'm sure it is if not mid-range and here once again another MJ with um, penicillin for some reason I, I don't know what that is must be some Japanese album this is the MDXG which is um, which which should be um, very familiar in terms of the name because there is a top-of-the-line TDK cassette called the MAXG which ran from I'm pretty sure 1985 to 1991 before that there was the MAR from 1979 to 1982 but anyway some more MDXGs very nice feel these have very textured I like them bunch of MJ's yeah it it kind of it kind of reminds me of um you know MJ from Spider-Man you know Mary Jane Watson I've I've been um reading up on um Spider-Man stuff and I've been watching a lot of Spider-Man because I am very hyped for the for the new movie that's coming out, No Way Home. Um, I am very much expecting Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield to come back in that movie. And I'm very happy that um, Alfred Molina is staying, or rather is coming back as Dr. Octopus. There have been some leaks saying that the Dr. Octopus from No Way Home is not the same as the one in Spider-Man 2 because of some lines that Tobey Maguire allegedly said but you know I can't really say much they have to be, they have to be verified <laughs> they have to be verified first a whole lot of MJ's in this one yeah um, that's pretty much it actually that's all of the cassettes they're just rather the MD's they're MJ's XA's and, MJ, and MD MDXGs and then some ra some random MDs. So yeah, I'll just put these away. But all of them, or rather most of them, have their own labels, as you can see here. Yeah, I don't know any of these albums or songs if they are songs. But yeah, the Yellow Monkey, Mr. Children, Speed. Um. <laughs> ELT, I, I don't know what these are, really. Yeah, a bunch of these. Um, I'm very excited to use them in the future. You know, later on. But anyway, um, I think that's actually everything for the mini discs. So let's get into the players. So, yeah. Yeah, that's. Oh, oops, I missed one. I missed one. 
one batch of mini discs. Yeah, here you go. This is just, yeah, a bunch of sealed ones again, which I got for dirt cheap. Yeah, Sony Basic 80, another Basic 80, and then um, some more Nijas. I, 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 don't, I really don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah, a bunch of these. So now, let's get to the two mini disc Walkmans that I have here, or rather portable mini disc devices, you know. One of them is working, one of them is not, at least according to the description in, um, in Yahoo Auctions. Let's just take off this bubble wrap now. Whole lot of bubble wrap here. Okay, let's get, let's begin with the non-working one first. This is a um, a sharp, sharp Alvi. Um, the model is uh, MDDS30S. It comes with the original remote, and uh, apparently it has um, it cannot read the mini disc. And I'm pretty sure I just have to clean the laser of it. It looks really nice, very classy in design. Let's see. Okay, it opens up like this. There you go, just on the side there. Very nice um, snap there. I could just um, put a bunch of alcohol on that lens to clean it, but we'll see. It's only a player, um, and the buttons are on the back. And you have to insert a gum stick battery inside. This is the remote. It has a um, very weird proprietary connector. And uh, unfortunately, it's already quite yellow. Um, yeah, but I, I don't really mind. I'll just use the buttons here at the back. It connects like this. It's really weird. I, yeah, like... Why would you do that? Just just two pins at the... Why don't you just put the jack or the the headphone thing on the side and the connectors, you know. But whatever. That's the sharp. And this one over here is a Sony. Yeah. Of course, I'm a very big fan of Sony. But I'm not a fanboy, really. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not... Too big of a fan, but I definitely am a fan. And I got this because it was quite cheap and it had nearly every accessory. This one right here, and it's a recorder. Yeah. So this is the Sony MZR909. Very nice layout of buttons. Really, really smooth. Um, oh, hold on. There's a, there's a battery inside. Ah, that's nice. Thank you, Mr. Seller. And let's see. It's quite heavy. Maybe there's a mini disc inside. No mini disc. Okay, it's fine. Very nice snap. Very smooth. It feels a lot like my Sony WM WMEX1. You should check out that video, I'm going to put it right there. Yeah. WMEX1. Reminds me a lot of that. Now if you look at the remote. Um, yeah, very nice. All of this is packaged really nicely, so I'm sure the seller put a lot of care into this. Yeah, the remote. Very nice. You could actually turn this to adjust the volume up and down. There's a clip for the belt. And then a bunch of buttons on the top and a hold switch on the side. And it connects to the device just like this. Yeah. And you could put here line in or optical. And then a mic if you want. When you want to record on a mini disc. Um, let's see. Let's, let's just grab this MDXG here. Yeah. If you open this up. Yeah. You just put the mini disc in like this. There you go. Pops out like that. Great stuff. Okay. 
I just hope it, it works as it should. <laughs> I'm sure it will, but, you know, there's still some amount of uncertainty. This right here is a 3-volt uh, power adapter. Um, let's see. Yeah, it takes 100 volts because it's from the from this because it's from Japan. But that's fine. I do have a power transformer somewhere, and um, the way how you connect this is through the bottom here. Now I'm not sure if this connector here for the AA battery is the same as in my EX1. I'm gonna check that right now. Um, here's my Sony WM EX1. Yeah, very big compared to the MD Walkman. Um, if I take off the, the battery adapter here and I place it on here, does it actually connect? Let's see. Oh, it does. It does. Wow. Let's see. Does it turn on? How do you turn this on? I just press play. Oh, oh, it turns on. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. Yeah, it turns on. Wow, very nice. Yeah, no disc. No disc. Let's see, if I open this up and place the uh, MDXG inside, let's see. Can it play? Please tell me it can play. Oh, it's spinning. It's spinning. Oh, it plays! Let's go! Yeah, it plays. I'm gonna plug in some headphones into this and let's see how it sounds. Just one second. Let me grab my headphones over here and then test it. Oh wow, yeah. It's some some, some kind of uh, some kind of rock music. Yeah. Wow. Sounds really good. I'm going to bring up the volume right now. Wow. Yeah, I have to pull it out. Yeah, um, let me actually take off the headphones here and plug in my other headphones, which would be louder. And I'm going to make it, um, I'm going to try to make it heard on the camera. Oh my goodness, let's go. Okay. Okay, I'm back. I've got my AKG K72s. Um, let's plug it in here like this. Then let's increase the volume to max. Oops. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Yeah, it's um Okay. I'm going to I'm going to stop that now. Yeah, it's some Japanese music. I'm not sure if I'll get copyright claimed because of that, but you know I I don't really mind, okay? I I run no ads on this um on this channel. So if I get copyright claimed, I literally don't even care. <laughs> Just as long as this video doesn't get blocked to all countries. I really, really do not want that. But yeah, it plays. Um, I will test recording later. I definitely will. Um, I'll put these away for now. Yeah, all of you go there. EX1 go there. Um, yeah, okay. That was really nice. Um, now, before I bring up the two decks, I have one last item, which is basically the odd one out. Yeah. This thing. You know what this is? It is a Pioneer timer. An audio timer. Um, folks, I'm just going to tell you that I have, a, I have a very hard time waking up in the morning. <laughs> waking up on time, rather. So... This audio timer would, would really help me. Yeah. Um, what, it, what it does is, at certain times of the day, um, it will turn on the power. And so, for example, if it's hooked up to a tape deck or a record player, it would 
play some music to wake you up or whatever you recorded on it so there yeah that's how that works um, once again very thick bubble wrap yeah oh man <laughs> very thick oh there you go now um, the main reason why I picked this is because it's also a flip clock and the folks that know me know that I love flip clocks yeah there you go it's a Pioneer PP215A um, outside of Japan it was called the JT215A that's the flip clock right there and I can adjust the time just by doing this yeah and then I can also adjust when it does its thing and I could also make a sleep timer so for example with a sleep timer I could play some music for a certain number of minutes and then it stops and these switches auto and ever on auto means um, that the alarm clock is functioning and ever on means that everything is well on and it also is a socket doubler yeah that's really great for um, for my case because I have a lot of things plugged in and uh, very little power sockets left yeah really nice really smooth um, I'll test out if it works later and I'm pretty sure it does it was advertised as working so yeah beautiful thing um, totally 70s yeah has a very 70s look and feel to it with all of the switches and the brushed steel everybody loves brushed steel obviously <laughs> so now um, I'm gonna put these things away like on the floor or something for now and then I'm going to bring up the two decks so yeah um, let me just put these over here and uh, if I zoom out, yeah, that's those are the other things. I'm also going to be putting them away. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, temporarily, I'm just going to put these on the floor. And some of the, uh, yeah, the three devices, I'll just put them on my bed. <laughs> yeah, and everything else will go on the floor. All of the uh, MDs and cassettes. Yeah, I'll just um, leave as much space um, as I could, you know, where, wherever the decks fit. As long as they fit on the table, that's fine. So, yeah, um, I think they would fit now, actually. So, let me bring up the first one. Okay. Ooh, these are quite heavy, so... Ooh. Okay, wow. This is deck number one. Ah, huge chonker this one is. Yeah. This is actually a mini disc deck by Onkyo. I'm pretty sure. If I remember correctly at least. Yeah. Mini disc deck by Onkyo. Um, very, very cheap. It was working and I got it for about 1,000 yen. Very nice. Um, but once again, if you add taxes and shipping, it makes it a pretty normal price. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we just. I'm trying to cut this in a way such that I don't harm the deck itself. At least I'm trying. This kind of bubble wrap is the one I was talking about a while ago. Um, very interesting type of type of bubble wrap. Very big circles. Very durable, I think. Let's put away that first layer of bubble wrap. Okay. And now we have layer number two.
yeah lots of bubble wrap here actually layers two and three because there are three layers yeah let's just cut those without harming the without scratching the deck Ooh. wow oops Yeah, very clean machine, and it's um champagne colored, which is great. Even though I prefer silver or over champagne, I definitely prefer champagne over black, like 100%. I do. Okay, well this is the Onkyo deck. Um, the mini disc recorder it says it's model MP1 MD124 okay um, let me just get the camera off the tripod here and let's take a look at the deck itself yeah beautiful beautiful um, you can see that that's the power button standby and then there's the mini disc entry and eject let's see would it be possible to insert a mini disc right now um, Okay, I can. I don't really wanna, you know what, let's try it. Yeah, it's not gonna pull it in unless I, you know, unless it's powered. Um, input, you could select what you want. Mono, stereo, D1, D2. Yeah, the mono and stereo are, from, are for the analog inputs. D1 and D2 are for the optical and coax inputs. Timers, yeah, off rec play, bunch of options here for the screen and of course playback functions. Yeah, stop and play. You can quickly fast forward or rewind there. You can adjust the rec level. You can edit a bunch of things. Yes. Phones and then you can adjust the level on there. If we turn to the back. Oh, wow. Very heavy. Yeah, those are the analog things, rec and play. Remote control, I don't have that. And then, yeah, optical and coax. And a second optical for output. Yeah, MD124. Okay. Um, yeah, that was the Onkyo deck. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, before the cassette deck, I'm gonna bring the Onkyo down somewhere. Oh, yeah. Mm. There you go. And, um, I'm gonna prepare myself a little bit before I open up the cassette deck. Because this cassette deck is the main thing that I'm looking forward to. In this um in this whole thing from Japan, so yeah, I'm gonna get to that really quickly. Okay, well um, I'm back from my little break, and during that break, I realized that I actually forgot to review a part of the mini disc deck, and that part is right here. Um, what is this? It's actually the remote of the deck. So, um, let's just open it up right here. Pretty thin layer of bubble wrap compared to the others. Just one layer. There you go. Um, yeah. The Onkyo RC286S R1. Bunch of, um, bunch of buttons here. Um, I'm not actually sure if it's the the proper um, remote for this deck because as you can see there's a bunch of tape deck buttons here um yeah so so the seller in Japan must have gotten the the thing wrong maybe maybe mixed it up with something but yeah that's what I got I bought it 
without really giving it much thought, giving the remote much thought, because well, to be honest, I really, I really only care about the deck. And yeah, great deck, um, very simple remote, which was um, mixed up apparently. I'm guessing at least it got all shook up, you know. Um, but anyway, for, let's get to our main event. Uh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, absolutely gigantic. Let's uh, cut these bits of tape over here. There you go. Ah. Um, let's get that bubble wrap out of here. Sounds like a dog again. <laughs> um, yeah, he always does that whenever there's somebody nearby who isn't me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if you could hear that any anyway. But yeah, that's him barking. There must be somebody out there yeah I'm just ripping this stuff apart really okay okay <laughs> wow wow that is a stunner Oh my goodness, beautiful. Let me get this bubble wrap out of here really quickly. Wow, oh man. Ah. To be honest, it smells of, of 70s cigarettes. <laughs> and the, the yellowed sides definitely reflect cigarettes. But I, I don't really mind. This right here is a Sony TCK55 from 1979. It's the Mark II, which means that it has support for all four cassette types. Type 1, 2, 3, and 4. Which is wonderful, because those are the types of cassettes that I like. Um, I like cassettes which are silver. They look good, sound good, and support all four types. Yeah, it's a two-head deck. Um, as you can see on the top, it actually has a guide on um, what blanks you should set to um, certain types. So, for example, um, the Sony Duad should be Type 3, or the um, Sony BHF should be Type 1. Yeah, that's just your traditional guide there. Some Iowa decks also have that. Um, and for the three-headers, which have... Um, what do you call this? Adjustable recording bias. Those I was actually have a guide at the top, which tells you what kind of bias you should set on the scale. So around what part of the wheel. So yeah, this is from 1979. It was actually serviced by the seller. I got this for 8,000 yen. Pretty cheap for this type of deck. I think, especially for a serviced one. Um, yeah, very um, smooth eject, soft eject. It would definitely pass the dad test. <laughs> Tape counter, memory on and off. So the memory is if it goes to zero on the tape counter, it automatically plays. Dolby noise reduction and MPX filter. That's that as well on there. Um, EQ for types 1 to 4, same with bias. Input selector button for line and mic. There's the mic input, headphone output, recording level adjustment, very smooth. Um, yeah, 
and what the seller did when he serviced it is um, he deoxed all of the pots, he recalibrated the bias, um, like cleaned up the insides and whatnot, and that's the cassette well. Really, really beautiful. Like, hold on, let me zoom in. Zoom in there. Yeah, sand dust and ferrite head, and you can see the entire mechanism right from the door. That is so nice. Just wow. BSL motor, logic control. The BSL motor should reduce noise and increase um, tape stability. Very nice smooth power button. Timer, rec, play, and off. Really nice machine. Just beautiful. I will... Um, I, I will show these, uh, these VU meters light up when I test this but for now let's look at the back Ooh. okay yeah there's um caution just the normal stuff um, yeah 16 watts 5060 Hertz 100 volts TCK 55 um, of course, that's your line input and line output on the left side of the back. So from the front, that's on the right side. And of course, your plug. That's... Yeah, sorry about the dog, if you can hear that. That's basically it, actually, for... Ah, for Joss. Joss? Joss? I don't know how to pronounce it, but... I, I, I call it Joss, so like sauce but with a J, you know, Joss. Yeah, I'll grab this um, 1979 TDKD and then I'll, I'll place that inside the deck. Um, one second. Some of my mini discs actually um, <laughs> fell from the stack because I, I shook the table a bit too hard. Sorry about that. Here's my D. The TDKD, <laughs> eject, place it inside, and wow, look at that, oh wow, just wow, seriously, man, that, that is, that is great, that is beautiful, and then, and then you could see the, the head just go up there in the, in the pinch roller, and it's much easier to spot a dirty pinch roller or a pinch roller that that chew the tape. Speaking of, the seller also cleaned the entire tape transport and I can see that very clearly. Very very clean area and very very beautiful deck for pretty cheap as well. Yeah. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these things in along with the um, the Pioneer timer I'm gonna hook all of these up to my stereo system and then, yeah, my hi-fi setup and I'm going to test them and see if, you know, test all of the functions for the very first time and see if they work as they should. So yeah, let's get to that. So as you can see, I'm, I'm in the process of, um, of setting this thing up. There, there is, that's where the Sony goes. Um, yeah, the Victor and the Trio are down there, the shorter ones. My, my amp is at the top. I'm actually thinking of just getting um, powered speakers instead of having, so that I don't have um, an amplifier at the top, so that all of it looks, you know, better. Um, but anyway, over here on the side, yeah, the, the timer goes there, and for some reason it's missing its feet. I'm not 100% sure where they went. I will have to check the listing again. And um, if if the feet are in the listing, then I must have um, left them somewhere in the packaging. It must have been, yeah, somewhere there. And the mini disc deck, it's going to go um, somewhere else in my room. Um, yeah, it's gonna be next to some powered speakers, um, right next to my bed. That's what I was thinking. But anyway, yeah. And um, I'm actually going to be opening up some brand new. Uh, RCA cables so let's do that right now before I place them 
um, before I connect them to my deck and to my um, tape switch box. So yeah, it's just this U Green RCA cable. Um, rather cheap, which I like. Oh wow, very fragile plastic. Easy to um, to rip. There you go. Yeah, um, rather thick cables and uh, gold plated ends. Yeah, quite cheap. They were like four or five dollars a piece, I think, or three for what was it one meter or something? I don't know, but yeah, those are the RCA cables. I'm going to be connecting them right now to my switch box. I'll also show you the switch box in just a moment. Whew, okay. Well, that's done. It's just an absolute wall of decks and an amplifier and a tuner. And on the side over here, you will spot my, um, my switch box and my timer. I'm going to head over to the timer and switch box now. And with the switch box, this is actually a Sony SB500. Um, as you can see that there is a monitor function. I could switch between what tapes I am monitoring and for tape copy. So you could see here, let me bring the camera a bit closer. Um, you can see here there are switches for tape 1, tape 2, and tape 3 as source and copy. And then another switch here for 1, 2, and 3. Basically with source, you are using this tape, this um, deck, and you are recording that as a source on the tapes labeled on the decks labeled copy and you could use this one to choose which source you have if you have multiple so for example if I have tapes 1 and 2 as source I could select between tape 1 and tape 2 as the source and tape 3 is the copy so there and then of course on the side you have your normal source and tape switcher and the source is um, I just connected it to a regular 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter so there you have it and of course I, I plugged in I plugged in my two decks to this um, pioneer so now I'm gonna bring the camera back once again um, let me just try to avoid all of this bubble wrap and what I'm going to do is um, yeah I'm going to check if everything's working so yeah let's see if I wired everything up the right way I'm sure I did but of course we just have to check some things of course so um yeah let's let's do this now um let me really quickly plug all of the things into my transformer and then I'm gonna turn it on okay I have turned on the transformer and as you can see nothing is on yet but the timer is working yeah that's great the light is on and um, the little LED on the clock is also on I'm not sure if you could see that very clearly if I go to auto um, I set the the alarm to seven o'clock and it's seven o'clock now yeah it seems to be working very well um and we'll just have to see in uh in one minute if the time actually works so um yeah but anyway let's go back to the decks now okay let's move back okay this is the the big reveal now okay Let's bring the camera a bit closer and zoom in on the TCK55 and if I put my finger and press it Voila! Oh my goodness! Yes! It works! Okay, it turns on! That's, that's one part. Now part two I have to um, test if it plays. Okay, I'm sure it does but let's just plop in a cassette. Beautiful, beautiful. Play. Let's go. Let's go. It plays. It's spinning. 
Yes! And the view meters are, are, are moving. They're moving. The view meters. They're moving. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is just, um... Yeah, really nice. Okay. Very, very firm. Very smooth. Very soft. Very... <laughs> Very good. Yeah, very happy. Um, a, lo a lot of berries there in that in that sentence. Yeah, it works. Thank goodness. Um, now I'm going to test out the sound really quickly. Um, I'm gonna turn on my amplifier. Um, yeah. Um, right now I'm going to try out and see if if my if my amplifier still makes sound <laughs> because you know um, yeah cuz cuz I of course rewired everything and I had to move some stuff so I just have to make sure that my amplifier is making sounds by testing a cassette that I have on the Victor so I'm gonna try that out right now um, I'm currently rewinding the cassette um, because well it's the, the most recent cassette I've played <laughs> yeah um, Right now, it's actually rewinding on a on a Jensen, um, the a Jensen cassette recorder, because that that mono thing was actually my very first um, cassette recorder. It was yeah in um <clears throat> in the cassette community, we generally refer to these things as BPC. Um, yeah, and BPC is. Um, yeah, you you should probably know what that is. Yeah, that is mono BPC, that Jensen. I'm gonna play a song now. Let's just hope it works. This is um Elvis Presley Rip It Up. Yeah, let's see. Um Okay, good. Um it plays. Okay, there's sound in the amplifier, so that's good. Um I'm going to grab one of my other cassettes then I'm going to test it on the on the deck so yeah um here you go let's grab this TDK SA from 1979 just to fit the thing it was sent to me by um, somebody from Cassette Central so thank you once again to Zotac um, Let's plop it in there. Bias and EQ to type 2. Dolby noise reduction off. And it's the moment of truth. Oh, oops. Nearly forgot. I have to switch to tape 2 on my switch box. There you go. There you go. That's. Wow, okay. It works. Yeah, um it works very well. Sounds pretty nice. That that was Elvis Presley's One Night. Um yeah, you should know that song by now. Uh yeah, if you don't, give it a listen. Yeah, Elvis Presley One Night. Very good on the TDK 1979 TDK SAC90. Yeah, I am I am really rambling here, but yeah, I'm just very, very excited and very, very happy to have this. Um, yeah, and once again, this is completely unscripted, so rambling is kind of what I do here. Let me really quickly test the memory. So let's see, if I rewind. Oh, oops, nearly forgot. I have to turn it on. Okay, let's fast forward again. And then, yeah, it's on 4 now, so if it goes to 0, it should play or stop. Okay, it stops. So that's the memory function. Um, oh, yeah. That was another song by Elvis. Hard-headed woman, I'm pretty sure was the title. Yeah, wow. It, it, it works. Yeah. Um, very happy about that. So, um, basically what I can do is I can have two things playing at the same time right now they're both playing and, and with the switch box I can switch between the two of them look yeah wow and very very clear sound 
Um, definitely much clearer than, than the KDA66 in my opinion. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, that's... Yeah, let me just try to avoid uh, copyright. Yeah, wow. Um, that's it. And I just realized I have to align the deck a bit to the left. But those are the two cassette decks. Right now, I'm going to test the mini disc deck, which of course should, which I'm thinking of putting in another spot in my room. But for now, um, since I don't have everything in that spot yet, I don't have the powered speakers, I'll just test it right here on the floor, okay? So yeah, I'm gonna do that test right now. Just a moment. <laughs> So I've been I've been checking out this uh, this deck and the switch box, and yeah. So for example, if I want to copy something from my TCK55 to my KDA66, um, from here I could just select tape two as source and tape one as copy. Then tape two will be my source. And right now I'm monitoring from tape two. Yeah, as you can see, if I press record pause on the Victor. And yeah, there you go. It works just like that. Um, the song right now is Are You Lonesome Tonight by, by Elvis Presley. And if I monitor tape one, yeah, you, you can hear. That's, that's basically this. That's the source, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, that should be enough for the, for the cassette decks. Let's get to the mini disc deck right now. Now for the mini disc deck. Um, welcome to my floor. Uh, for now, it's just gonna be there because I don't really have a place to put it on right now. But anyway, I just plugged it in, and as you can see there. The red light is already on for power, so that means at least it powers up. So right now, um, let's see what happens when I turn it on. Yeah. If I press power. Okay, awesome. Um, screen works. So let's plop a mini disc inside. Yeah, there's nothing inside the inside the deck. So we just have to plop one of our own mini discs. This is the um, MDXG from a while ago. If I place it inside there, there you go. It gets caught by the thing. Okay, it's reading the table of contents. There you go. Okay. Um, if I press play, let's go. Okay, I think it works. Yeah. The VU meters are, are bumping, and the, the track name is showing, and everything. Wow, okay. Um, let me grab my headphones really quickly. Okay, over here, my uh, AKG K72s, once again, because I don't have them hooked up to any speakers right now. So I just have to plug in the headphones, and then make the volume maximum. Yeah, it makes sound. Yeah, um, I'm sure you heard that. It's quite loud, that, that um, headphone amp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah, works as it should. I will have to test recording. But, yeah, that's all I have to test, really. Um, so, yeah, that's the mini disc recorder. Thank goodness it works. And, um, I think that's pretty much it for the, for the haul. Yeah, that's all of my loot. So let's get to the, <laughs> to the outro. Yeah. Well, those are all of the things I've bought from Japan in the year 2021. 
not sure if I'll be doing any of these again, but you could take a look at my other content by taking a look at the channel, and you could subscribe if you want, it helps out a ton. Um, like and comment for the algorithm, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All of the links I mentioned previously will be in the description, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.